Hi there, everybody. Um, so today is going to be um, what I think uh, a lot of fun. All right. So we have, I'm going to show you what I've been uh, working on with Security Plus and, um, and CYSA. All right. And um, I would actually like uh, your feedback. Don't mind providing that. So, um, so first of all, later on today, I'm going to post it, uh, an article on LinkedIn. If you're not on my LinkedIn, go ahead and go there. Okay, so you can see uh, some of the stuff I'm doing. Also, um, uh, I'll, I'll provide your other, other information about that later. But hold on, let me plug in my phone so I don't. So I don't die on you. Okay. Um, I had to write down some notes because y'all know how I get. Uh, so first of all, uh, in another video that I did, I talked about how, well, I commented on somebody else's video where he was saying, uh, getting certifications is too easy. You know, it, it, it should not take... Uh, or you should not take just a week or two to study mm -hmm. to get your certification. So I commented on that video. And one of the things I said was the reason why it's so easy, right? Because is it lacks design. It really does. It lacks design. There is not a, a push for understanding. There is just a push for memorization so you can pass the exam, which is just, you know, it is what it is. Not right or wrong. It just is what it damn is. Okay. Hey, Professor Black Ops, you didn't get a notification? Hmm. Uh, YouTube is strange sometimes, um, <clears throat> I've noticed. I have my bell on for YouTube, and I don't get all your notifications either. So uh, they got issues. But anyway, um, so, what, so because of the lack of design, cybersecurity is to... Uh, teaches as much about security in cyberspace as Pornhub teaches about love and relationships, okay? So that, that's the comparison that I see. Now, because it lacks, cybersecurity education lacks a holistic, especially now, especially, uh, especially, you know, studying for certifications, okay? It lacks holistic design and, and relevance, okay? Because you're, you're talking about security in cyberspace, in the digital world, all right? <laughs> Just like sex is something that happens in a relationship, okay? Or some kind of connection or something like that, right? Uh, for the most part. Um, and, you know, for those of you who don't know what Pornhub is, if you can't get this this thing, you know, just go to Wikipedia and you'll find a definition. They got a whole bunch of stuff, videos and things like that. OK, so the thing is, so it's like that, because when you first come into cyber, many of us, what, what do you hear about? You hear about the sexy stuff. It's the hacking, right, that you hear about. And, and that's the first thing that comes to mind when you when you think of security. You think of crime. <laughs> like that's the first thing you think about, which is crazy. You know, it's it's nuts. Um, but but you know, it's, it's the exciting stuff, the entertaining stuff, the let's you know, let's I want them to have fun in the class stuff. You know, and learn all, all that, which is important stuff. But it's not useful. It's not useful if I'm here to help secure the digital world for people who are here using it for business and you know commerce and relation you know forming relationships and all that stuff okay um so the issue here is the lack of fluency that's how i see it okay now what what do i mean by that what do i mean what i mean is no child in the united states of america well not, not i'm not going to say no 
Uh, most children in the United States born to English speaking parents are already fluent, have some level of fluency in English before they go to school. Very few children, okay, born in the United States to English speaking parents have to go to school to learn to speak English, okay? And, and why is that? Because they're, they're, they're hearing it every day. You know, mom and dad and uncles and aunts and foster parents, whomever, they're speaking it every day, you know, and that, that's how all children learn, learn language, all right? What do they hear around them? They're already fluent when they go to school, all right? Now, when it comes to us in the digital world, in cyberspace, we lack fluency. So the first time we're hearing a lot of this stuff is when I find out, you know, I need to get a security plus to get this job. That's the first time. All right. That I, now I may have been using computers and stuff, but I don't know what the hell is going on in the back office. <laughs> I don't even know that this thing is called a GUI. All right. I have no idea. Hi, Diamond. How are you? Thanks for being here. Um, so there's no fluency, all right? Um, so when I took Security Plus, when I took CYSA, you know, it was it was really the first time I was hearing this stuff. And there was very little I understood, but uh, especially with Security Plus. Now, CYSA, I was able to pull on things that I already knew from working in learning and development. Okay, I already had an analytical type mind already. So that was not a, a, a hard sell for me. But Security Plus was a lot of memorization. I mean, just a whole bunch of stuff, right? So so what the way that I've uh, designed this new uh, CYSA Security Plus curriculum is I'm drawing on what's called, there's a theory called theory of theories. Okay, so go go look that up on Wikipedia. It's theory of theories, and for the and basically what it says is, nobody goes into any situation uh, blind or or with a or as a blank slate. Okay, even babies, newborns. This theory says goes into situation with at least some kind of framework, something. OK, that that's either um, validated or not in, in the situation. And, and the same with that. Nobody is going into Security Plus uh, empty. All right. You have some world experience. So I, it, something something is already there. OK, so what I'm doing here is drawing on that. OK, I'm finding where are you fluent? All right. So I, we know that, you know, the way things operate around here, you're not going to be fluent in computer science or, or, or that kind of stuff. All right. So what can I now use to make this easier for you, you know, so that you can quickly, quickly understand so that you don't have to memorize when you understand something. Memory isn't needed. All right you, it, it just makes it that much easier. Okay. If you have to memorize, that's a lot of work. Y'all know what it's like, you know, trying to memorize some shit. That's a lot of work. <laughs> and then when you're done, it's gone, right? It's absolutely gone unless you start using it. All right. So that, that's what I've, um, that's what I've done here. So what I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen with you because I want you to see now, this is not the lesson. This is not the whole thing. OK, I, I still have to, to work on this, but I do want you to see what I'm doing and the rationale behind it. OK, because when it's ready, it's going to be fire. You hear what I said? I said when it's ready, it's going to be fire. OK. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to share my screen. With, now, listen, the screen better act right because I, I can't. We're not going to do this uh, on the Lord's Day. All right, we're gonna act right today. Here you go. All right, that's not the slide I wanted to start with, but all right, so this is what I'm doing. 
interest-based projects. Okay, so the other day I talked about somebody's uh, YouTube video where she was talking about project-based learning. Okay, this is kind of the same. It's interest-based, all right? So you tell me how you want to learn this CYSA content, the Security Plus content, or whatever other content. How do you want to learn it, okay? Through building a computer. So you're actually doing a project, but you're learning the concepts through this project. Do y'all get that? Uh, building a computer, workplace reorganization, building a Linux distro. So, you know, we're going to have several things for you to choose from as to how you want to learn this, okay? Based on what you already know or what you're interested in, okay? So the content for this is going to come from you all, okay? It's going to come from, um, you know, people who work in the area, like right now I'm going through and I've been through several workplace reorganizations. Okay. So I, I know, I know what, what happens during those things. Okay. So I would be a SME for that, for that area. Somebody else who, you know, builds computers, I would have to get with them, you know, to help work through how we're going to visit these concepts. Okay. But it's the, it's the, the same kind of thing. All right. Now this is what we want to happen. So the first one is we want people, those who come out of this thing, they're actually going to understand security in cyberspace. OK, uh, you, they're going to see value. Um, they're going to see relationship between security and vulnerability, um, importance of their role, where they're accountable in the digital world for what they're doing, okay? Now for this, in this instance, we're doing CYSA, okay? Um, and somebody who can apply human and machine functions to you know, create a secure environment and feeling for individuals in the organization, all right? So that's what the intent is. And that's what the design is, um, is, is headed toward, okay? So for example, again, this is about understanding CompTIA content through a workplace reorganization, for example. That's the way I'm doing the first one, okay? And eventually, hi, El Style, very nice to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, and then the Security Plus content through starting a business project, for example. So I'm sure many of you have probably started a business before or have a business now. You know what's involved in all that. So how can we learn the Security Plus content through that kind of a project? Okay. And it's and it's easy. I even had on here gardening. If you're a gardener, how can we learn that content through? It sounds crazy, doesn't it? But the thing is, the digital world, cyberspace, is only an extension of what we have here. It's not something separate and new and weird. And just, it's the same thing. It's just, you know, it's just on the continuum. It's an extension of what we already have here, okay? So everything already applies when you don't make it complicated, okay? Because it doesn't have to be. Okay. <clears throat> now, these I took from CompTIA's website. But the ones in red are words that I replaced, or are words that I added. I didn't take anything out. I did add some words to what CompTIA already has, again, to make it more holistic, because what we're going for here is fluency. We're going for fluency, okay, in CYSA and Security Plus, okay? So just for some of these, the first one, CompTIA has leverage intelligence and threat detection techniques. Now, for the, for the sake of the project, I'm saying in a workplace environment, okay? The next one, analyze and interpret data, I'm saying in complex situations because every situation is not the same. You can learn CYSA or Security Plus, get through it, go to work, and the environment that you're in will dictate how you're going, and if you're even going to use the stuff that you learned, okay? Do y'all get that? If you work in, in a chaotic environment, you're not going to be able to do the same thing as if your environment was simple. You know, you know what the cause and effect is and, you know, things are right, dress, right, dress and all that. OK, that's a different environment. OK, um, so the ones in red are the ways that I've um, modified 
what Comtia has. So the narrative that we have here is uh, set in a company going through a reorganization in a complex decision environment. The Kunevin uh, model of decision environments is where I get that. So Kunevin is, is C-Y-N-E-F-I-N. It looks like it's Sinefin, right? But it's Kunevin, all right? Um, and we're going to look at the CYSA concepts, problems, projects, and scenarios um, set within a narrative of a reorganization. All right. So do you all get that? Do you see where I'm going with this as far as interest based and really being able to understand this content through what you already have or an interest that you already have? OK. So the lessons now. One of the resources I'm using, so Jason Dion has created his um, CYSA, um, uh, is it just the questions? I don't, it may be just the questions. I have to look at it again, but I downloaded it, okay? Um, now I, I use Jason Dion's materials to help with this. Now I'm not taking his content, okay? Cause that's not even what this is. But I like the way he does it because he just does the stuff that's on the exam. OK, and I still want people to be able to leave out of this and be prepared for the exam. OK, studying to pass the exam is different than, you know, studying security, you know, as a whole. Right. So he the content he has is, is you know, very straightforward. And I want to keep this in that kind of a framework. All right. Um, so this uh, this is also from uh, Comtia and the stuff that Dion has has in his book. And in red again is where I've modified it to make it more holistic and more interest based. All right. Um, and let's just look at the first one. So compliance and assessment is the first um, lesson that you'll see in the CYSA. The, I'm not talking about the new one, the O2. All right. I added mission here. OK, because first of all, you need to know where you're working and why those people are there. Like, what is their mission? What is the mission of that business? All right. You need to know that as a as a security analyst. OK, uh, the standard says apply security concepts, support organizational and risk mitigation, and understand the importance of frameworks. So you need to know the mission. You need to know what the assets are. OK, what are these? Why am I here? What assets am I helping to protect? OK. Um, and in relationship to work and performance. All right. I'm you are there as a, as a, an analyst. OK, because there is work being done. These people are producing something. OK. And they don't want interruption. They need to get it done. They don't want interruption. Uh, they need their intellectual property to remain with them because that's where they make their money. OK, that's how they make their money. So they need that stuff protected. They need it available. They need it only being seen by people who need to see it. That's why you're there. OK, now you need to understand that. All right. So a lot of us go into these organizations just blind. OK, I know a job was posted. I got to go here and do this. Get in there, don't know what the hell is going on. Like very like tunnel vision, okay? I'm just here to look at data. Don't know what's, like, what are these people doing? You know, it, you could be in the clan, okay? This is the clan organization and you over there, like, do you agree with that mission? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what the hell? <laughs> what y'all doing up in here, you know? Okay, so those are the lessons now. The narrative is all of those CompTIA standards, or whatever the hell you call them, okay, those are going to be encountered, all of them, okay, in a very realistic way. So you're not just sitting there learning port numbers, okay, 80 is this, 443 is this, 23 is this, you know, this is, the, these are the well known, these are the, uh, the, the like with no, no reason, right, you're just memorizing some shit. OK, this is going to be in a realistic way. Why in the hell are we even talking about Port 80 right now? What does that have to do with this business and what's going on in their reorganization? OK. So the narrative. 
This is how we're going to run through it. You're going to prepare for the reorg. Then you're going to engage in it. Okay. You're going to do some stuff. You're going to interact. You're interacting with everything, not just the machines. Okay. Not just the ones and the zeros. You got to talk to people. You're probably on a team with a whole bunch of different personalities. Okay. I'm sure that that's happening or will happen if you don't have a job yet. Right. Then you're going to try out the, the roles and the tasks and you're going to plan the way for it. You go for it in January. Awesome, Diamond. That's great. <coughs> um, OK, so now we're going to get into it. Um, and it has to start here. We, we need to know what when we say things are happening in a system, what the hell is does that mean? OK, what what is a system? <laughs> and what does it do? You know, you're basically a bunch of interconnected people, processes, and machines seen, seen by someone and you're working together to produce something. That's what it is. A system is a whole bunch of things connected together, working together to produce something. Okay. Now that's very important. Now this is the organization that you're going to be in. I call it aerodynamic, aerodynamic, sorry. So Aerodynamic is a woman-owned company that specializes in manufacturing erotic toys made of safe materials. Erotic toy connoisseurs flock to Aerodynamic to experience a dearth of innovative sex tech created for body parts they didn't even know they had. Okay. Now, the mission of Aerodynamic is to encourage the universal celebration of sexuality as an artful and unique expression of humanity. Now, your role in aerodynamic as a cybersecurity specialist is a, you're an entry level cybersecurity analyst working to promote the feeling and state of security for aerodynamic leaders, employees, partners and customers. That's the frame. That's why you're here. OK. So this is the scenario that we're going to use to learn and understand the CYSA plus and also the security plus when I do that one. Okay. So that's it. Now, what's next? We said prepare for reorganization. That was the first step. That's mission compliance and assessment. Now, some of the things we're going to learn or we're going to use in this area, we're going to um, talk about security as it relates to aerodynamics assets and mission critical work. What's the mission critical work? OK, what's the really important stuff that they have to do in order for this business to remain viable? OK, El Style, you said some organizations use ephemeral instead of registered ports to throw off in map port scans. OK, that's good to know. So and you see, El Style, that's that's the kind of information that I um, need for for this kind of thing. OK, um, so we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to talk about, talk about the type of information system in the company. So, Professor Black Ops, this gets to the risk management framework, right? What what kind of system is this? All right. So that that kind of information is going to be here. We're going to talk about system ports, okay? Or or uh, they're also called well known ports, system ports. We're going to talk about operating system and system files, okay? Because this is about the system, and we want to know what um, because the ports are connected to services, right? What services does aerodynamic use? Okay, what do they need? All right, and this is why the port discussion comes in. Okay, so for the digital information, for the ones and the zeros, for that information that's being filed, you know, in these file systems. All right, what ports are they using to get this information? Right. What's critical to the business? Well, what's going on there? All right. So you see now that already gives you a reason to learn the content. And, and that's missing from a lot of, you know, certification learning right now. What's the reason for this? Why am I learning this? What does this have to do with that? What does the ports have to do with what does NMAP have to do with ports and, you know, or, or with Linux or, or something? OK. This stuff gives you a reason to learn it. OK, and it just makes it make sense. You know, if stuff makes sense, then, you know, you're not struggling to understand. 
right? And also here in the beginning, so I'm, I'm still, you know, putting it together and y'all let me know as well, right? But in the beginning, <laughs> that's funny, in the beginning, right? We have to talk about uh, memory. We, we have to understand that. We have to understand that nothing happens without the space for it to happen, just like in the physical world, okay? Look around you right now, you got a whole bunch of space. I'm not talking about the air, I'm talking about space, okay? That's where things happen, they happen in space. In the digital world, things happen in space, or what we call memory, okay? Which is, but memory, is physical. It has memory is a physical thing, right? It's the ones and the zeros that we create, you know, and they put on whatever the hell they they put the one the magnetic stuff and all that, right? So we have to we have to know we have to start there. We have to know what that is and why that is, okay? And bring bring a little bit of um, computer science into this to to help. But but it won't be a hard sell. Like it won't be, <laughs> it won't be, you know, a, a hard thing to know. And then we start talking about RAM and all that other stuff, right? But the thing is give, getting you fluent in these things, okay? So that the other things just come more easily. You don't have to, to work so hard, okay? So that's this part, mission compliance and assessment. And then we're gonna get to uh, the reorganization itself where we're talking about threats, vulnerabilities, testing and reporting. OK, you're not just going to get in there, do some stuff, test it, find something and keep that shit to yourself. Who are you going to tell and how are you going to tell them? <laughs> OK, Elsa, I have not seen that very often. I've seen reverse proxy. Oh, OK. You all having a whole wonderful conversation. That's awesome. Uh, so we're going to engage in some reorg tasks. So threat and vulnerability management. OK. Now, y'all see, I have added all, all kinds of stuff to what uh, CompTIA already has, but again, to make it interest-based and relevant to cyberspace, okay? Um, we're going to understand the organization's internal and external risks, and we're going to understand also, in addition to what they have here, administrative, physical, and logical security. OK, now I work in policy. I'm, I'm on the administrative side of security right now. OK. And I, I have to tell you, there is a struggle. There's a whole entire struggle when there is no policy to help people know what to do. OK, when it comes to securing the digital assets in the organization. OK, I'm telling you, people. I, I can't tell you exactly what's what's going on, but let me just say the lack of policy is not helping anything. All right, so you gotta know about that. You have to know about that. So the tools we're gonna use, of course, you're gonna talk about policy. We're gonna do threat modeling. We're actually gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna do some threat modeling because you need to know. <laughs> and it's not, it is not just for, uh, cybersecurity um, analyst, right? If you're a, a developer, you need to know what the threats are, internal and external, okay? Uh, we're gonna do the scanning and manual security testing or pen testing. Now I showed y'all in the last um, Security in the Black, I told you about Carolyn Wong's uh, document. Uh, what does she call that? Something 2020, but it's where she, she compared what vulnerabilities and, and faults can we find with machines versus which ones can only humans find or are humans find much better, right? So that's gonna be a resource for this too. And I'm going to use those uh, vulnerabilities in this course, right? So that we can find them, you know, you can find them and know how to fix them, all right? We're not just finding some stuff with, because the end game is that not only are they fixed, but we got to find out where did the where did the issue happen? Okay, where did it happen? If you think of car manufacturing, right, and something comes out like the door is bent or whatever, so they can fix the door, okay, right there. But where the hell did that happen? So we got to go back and see what's going on upstream. 
you know, to see where the fix needs to happen. Is it happening in a, a decision that somebody is making some way, somewhere, you know, that stuff has to occur. All right. So we need to look at those kinds of things, too. And of course, reporting. Uh, we got to practice. We got to practice writing. We got to practice uh, speaking. OK. And not just. So I have to um, one of the things I'm doing is a, a service level agreement. OK. Where I need to you know, speak with the people at the service desk, you know, and, and, and the help desk who are working with the various uh, groups in the organization, you know, to help them fix their issues. Uh, and the way, and these people have to speak to management. Management don't know, you can't use technical speak to speak to people who don't do this stuff, okay? We really have to learn how to talk about um, technology with people who don't know about it, all right? And that's just so that they can understand and make a make a decision. You get it? Okay. Uh, resilient security and best practices. Now, NIST, I forget which what NIST publication it is, but they've recently come out last uh, year with a publication about resilience. Okay. And I talked about it in one of my other videos about that publication. So NIST is going to be in here as well, okay? Because again, this is not just about you learning how to, um, this, this is not a Pornhub type uh, lesson here, okay? <laughs> We're not using Pornhub to learn about relationships, okay? We are actually learning about security in cyberspace to learn about cybersecurity. To get it, to get you get the difference here. Okay, so that that's what this is. Um, and this is just you know one of the next one. We're going to interact with people, talk about resilience. So, how do you not only apply security solutions, which we think about as controls, right? All the the list of controls that we have to help us secure uh, various things in in the in our digital assets. Okay, but we're also talking about resilience. What do we have to do to also be resilient? Okay. Are those different kinds of controls than what's already listed there? They are. They absolutely are because it goes beyond digital. Okay. It goes beyond digital. There are also people controls that have to be in place. Right. And y'all know how I define controls. Okay. And that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's another thing. Security and control and vulnerability, or you know, the way that um, I've presented it here to you is the way that we're talking about it here, okay? Because the, the digital world is becoming, you know, so pervasive, very pervasive, and we need to be prepared. And the way we're doing it now is not gonna is not gonna be useful. It's just not, you know. And I'm not the only one who's saying that. OK, a lot of, you know, older, more seasoned uh, people are saying that, too. OK, it's not just Cheryl, <laughs> but I just happen to agree with them. I totally agree. we got to start doing things differently. OK. And that's what this that's what this channel is for. All right. And so these are some of the notes and stuff that I have in here that I'm going to be that I'm going to be using. But let me let me tell you what I found. Um, I know, Professor Black Ops, I'm going to be leaning on you. Uh, heavily <laughs> when I get to this, when I get to this part about NIST, okay? So this is the way that um, that the design is going to go, okay? It's going to be interest-based. Um, <laughs> that was how you said you're a green leaf. It's going to be interest-based. It's going to be, hold on, let me get off of this. Interest-based, a lot more holistic, okay? And what I'm doing is I, so I'm not a technical person, right? So you can't come to me and ask me about how to, you know, necessarily configure various things or, you know, how to encrypt this, that, or the other thing or whatever, you know, I, I don't do that. However, what I do do is I'm very good at breaking things down, 
Okay. Even if I don't do it as a practice, you know, I'm very good at providing metaphor to help you understand, you know, what something is just like I did uh, like a while ago when I talked about memory. Okay. Um, I'm very good at that. Right. So those are the kinds of things that I can offer. Um, and I'm good at design. Okay. Which is why I'm doing this. All right. So those are the kinds of things and the kind of help, you know, that I can offer. And I say that because <laughs> this young lady um, called me the other day <clears throat> because we put something together for the, what's that first CompTIA exam? It's, um, what the hell is that thing called? It's the really, really super fundamental one. I forget what it's called. F FRT or something like that. I don't know, child. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But it's the very fundamental uh, CompTIA exam. It's like the first one you take that teaches you like what a keyboard is, you know, <laughs> like it's super fundamental. All right. So um, for the kids that were teaching in the nonprofit, we created uh, a four part series to help them understand that information. Um, Young lines and people in the security game. Um, so, so, and that's what I did there, right? We talked about keywords, like ways you can remember some the things you can associate uh, other things with, right? Like firmware is means like planted, right? Firmware is planted, meaning you can you can update it, okay? So, you know, you, you, it's not something you do every day, like the regular updates, but you can update it, but it's not, so it's not rooted like other things, like the hardware, okay? So firmware is just planted, not rooted. You know, you can take it up and you can do stuff like that. And like, you know, what a server is, and you know, all those kinds of things. But, but it was full of things like that, right? To really help them lean on what they already know to understand these security and IT concepts. So that's actually something that I'm going to, um, once I'm done with this, I'm going to go to my Patreon and offer that. And this course that I'm creating, as I move forward, I'm going to post what I have on the Patreon, you know, for people who want to see it, you know, earlier than, than you know, when it's done. And if you need help or assistance or something like that, you know, um, I'll be there for that too, to help. Uh, to help understand it, okay? Because um, there's a there's man so much stuff going on right in in the digital world when it comes to uh, security. When it comes to security, uh, and when I was reading about memory, right? So memory is very interesting, and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, go to Coursera or something like that, and really look at some computer science stuff, just because I'm interested in it that way. I'm somebody that needs to know why. Okay, you cannot just give me a definition of something and be like, here, Cheryl, you know, and no, no, I need to know why, why this way and not that way. And, you know, all that, <laughs> like, that's just how I am made. All right. So, but I think that's good for stuff like this, right? Because I, I'm, I'm in cybersecurity, but I'm a learning professional, like the, I'm a learning connoisseur, like really, that's what I do, right? So I am able to criticize when it comes to learning. Now I'm just telling you facts, okay? Like people, like people who are connoisseurs at wine tasting or sommeliers, right? That's who they are. And those people, I don't know if y'all have seen the sommelier process, the process they go through to learn about wines and the tests they have to take. They Listen, they put in the hours. They put in the work. There's a thing on, I don't know if it's still on there, but it was called SOM, right? These people were licking rocks, licking rocks, okay, to learn about the various uh, tones and, and, and noses and all this stuff of wine. Okay. They put the work in They're wine connoisseurs. All right. I'm not a connoisseur. I like sweet wine. That's what I like. Okay. I can't criticize nothing. I am not a wine critic. <laughs> I could not be because all I know is what I like. Okay. Now, and that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh my God. Hi, Corey. How are you? How's your studying going? Did you take your test? What were you studying for? Was it the CISA? Yeah. Did you take it, Corey? Corey said no sound. Okay. 
Uh, I have a YouTube channel already. Um, yeah, so that so that's what I'm talking about, okay? And because of that, y'all are going to get an amazing, an absolutely amazing learning experience when it comes to this interest-based stuff. And I'm excited about it because I like, like this. Like, okay, I, I really do. I really do like this. And I enjoy, I enjoy showing how easy it is, okay? Security Plus was hard for me. It was hard. It was hard for me. Um, and it, I, it didn't have to be. All right. It didn't have to be hard. It did not. So for those of you who have not gotten it yet or who will be getting some other kind of thing. OK, it doesn't have to be hard. OK, if you use what you already know. OK, that makes it so much easier. So let me tell you, let me tell you an example of this, right? Me and my boyfriend, we're going to Bus Boys and Poets in D.C. for lunch. Um, Bus Boys and Poets has some really good food, right? Their uh, shrimp and grits is amazing. And they have this cat, this baked catfish on like a, a cornbread pancake with greens. Chow. That thing is so delicious. Anyway. We were going to Bus Boys and Ports for lunch. Now I have no sense of direction. I really don't. I I don't know what's what's wrong. Something something's happening, but I it's hard for me. Okay, that is not my directions are not my bailiwick. Okay, so he's trying to tell me, Cheryl, this is how you get back home, and you know if you go this way and you turn here. Now D.C. is like a damn maze. I, I just don't get it. Okay, which is why I never drive in D.C. ever. So he's telling me, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So he said, listen, where do you work? And I was like, this is my, this is where I work. 1900 East Street is where I work. He said, if you go straight back that way, straight back that way, you'll get to work. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get it now. I get it, right? Because you're asking me where, now I know that. I can picture that in my head. I go there every day, like I know. Now, when you tell me if I go back this way, this one, I'll say, I, OK, you got to say nothing else. You don't have to spend 20, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour and a half trying to explain to me. OK, because now I'm anchoring what you're saying on something I already know. That's what this is about. That's what the interest based so security plus the interest based CYSA plus is about. I'm coming to you asking you, what do you already know? OK. What are you already interested in? That's what we're going to use so that you can understand this content, become fluent in it, okay? So that you don't have to do all this memorizing, you know, which takes a lot of bandwidth. Memorization takes a lot of bandwidth. It really does, all right? You ain't got to use all that. You don't. Because like I said, this stuff is, is not hard. It's just an extension of what we already have, okay? And that's all you need to understand. All right. So today, based on because I've been thinking about this for a minute, I'm going to post the article that I'm writing about um, how today, right now, how cybersecurity training is to security in cyberspace the way uh, Pornhub is to understanding relationships. All right. That's that's exactly what it is. Right. And we're trying to get away from that. All right. We can keep Pornhub. I mean, you can, you can do that stuff, but you just need to know that's not how you learn about relationships. OK, <laughs> so there's a better way. All right. You, you need a little bit more information. All right. To, to 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 be able to navigate that successfully. All right. We need more information to navigate security in cyberspace. That's what we're talking about. We're not just talking about cybersecurity. We're talking about security in cyberspace. All right. That's a different thing. That's a different thing. All right. It's definitely more holistic and more um, something that you have to pull on what you already know, you know, in order to understand. Right. And I have to refer you back to the article um, 
what the hell was the name of that article? That the, 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 he was uh, the Air Force person that he wrote. He said, um, oh, cyberspace is not a war fighting domain. If you type that into Google right now, cyberspace is not a war fighting domain. He has a lot of points in there that actually led me to even want to do this. Okay. Because I got my security plus and all that stuff before all of that. Right. So I'm like, you know what? This can be so much better. But his article, what he wrote and the rationale he has for even saying that, it makes so much sense. You know, it makes so much sense. It really does. Um, Corey, if you're still in here, um, I'd like to know how you did on the, oh, wait, let me see. You did say it. You said CYSA plus not taken as yet, still studying. All right. So Corey, let me know if you need some help. Okay. Because with your studying, what you're doing can definitely inform what I'm doing over here. Plus I can share with you what I'm coming up with over here. I, you know, we can kind of like test it together. And if anybody else in here is doing CYSA, um, let me know, okay? Or Security Plus, let me know. And um, so that we can, you know, work on this kind of stuff together while you're doing it, okay? While you're doing it, that'll be really cool. And Professor Black Ops, I'm absolutely gonna be reaching out to you about the, the NIST, about the risk management stuff, and to see where you feel, you know, those kinds of things would really fit into CYSA and Security Plus. I don't know if you, do you have, uh, have you taken that exam, Professor Black Ops, either one, either the Security Plus or the CYSA? Okay, yep, just send me an email, Corey, all right? Okay, all right, so that's really all I have for y'all today. Um, I really just wanted to show you what I was working on to let you know that uh, I'm gonna be reaching out to you for some things um, and uh, you know, cause I really want this to be co-created. I can't do it by myself. So I want it to be co-created with uh, those of you who are interested in, in doing so. That would be really useful for me and hopefully for you too, you know, especially if you're studying for something that that'll be really great. All right, so I'm going to be back. Oh, you have security plus, good. That's good, That that'll be really helpful. That'd be very helpful, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do another game. We're gonna have another game. I wanna have a, um, a security Jeopardy. And in that game, I want to help somebody, whoever you know wants it, to get, uh, to pay for your exam, whatever certification exam you're getting, okay? So, um, so that's gonna be the top prize. All right, is um, uh, help to pay for your security exam. Now I could not, I tried to find a way to get that. It's like a blanket security voucher, right? That CompTIA gives out where it's just a voucher. So there's no price on it or anything, but you buy like whatever you want. Okay, and it'll just, it'll just pay for that. But I can't get that because I have to be a partner with CompTIA and I'm not. So. It's just going to have to be cold, hard money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no voucher, just money. Okay. So I hope that's an okay substitute. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm putting, I, uh, I'm halfway done with that game. Uh, hopefully we can do it like in the next two weeks. Okay. And um, it's going to be questions and so it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Hopefully. Hope it's a lot of fun. But that's just going to be one of the prizes. There's going to be other, like, uh, I'm going to have three three prizes. So I've got to think about what the other two are going to be. But that's definitely going to be the top prize, okay? And uh, it's going to be fun. So, uh, Corey, I, I, I'm going to need you to get your uh, your Google together, okay? Because last time you were kind of, you were struggling there. Like, you know, <laughs> for, so for this next game, okay? <laughs> So let's get our stuff together. All right. I'm so happy you all were here. I really appreciate y'all. Please like the video. If you like this kind of content, like there's a thumbs up. If you can hit that, that would be really awesome because I know that Google uses that in some kind of algorithm to let other people know who may be interested. So please hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that so that I can see your lovely faces here next time. Okay. I appreciate every single one of you. I really, really do. 
Thank you so much for being here and I'm going to see you next time. Okay. Have a great Sunday.